You build a lot of apps with one code base. That's, that's the gist, right? That is the gist, indeed. Okay, Thank let's you. hear it. Give, uh, give a grand applause to uh, Bart. Thank you. So, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, killing two birds with one stone. Uh, we're all trying to do that here. We're all trying to kill iOS and Android, well, not kill, but um, squash it with, with one stone. Um, but what we are actually doing is not killing two birds with, uh, with one stone. We're killing eight birds with one stone because uh, we need to deploy our app to eight different environments. Um, but before I get to that, I'm gonna tell you about me. Funny you should mention the thing about screwing up my name because apparently I screwed up my own name when I registered as Bat Van Emberg. <laughs> my name is not Bat, it's Bart. <laughs> and actually, that's a real picture of me. Um, so yes, indeed, it's Bart Van Emberg with a real g at the end. You can practice it, practice it later. Um, some facts about me, uh, I just moved to Amsterdam 12 days ago from uh, a little city called Woerden in the middle of the Netherlands over there. So I'm still in the middle of a move uh, at home. Um, somewhere during that move, all of a sudden I realized, oh right, I have that presentation next week. I should get ready for that. Um, I got involved with uh, Nucleus, the company I work for. Um, in 2014 through someone else's retweet. It was kind of random. Um, I'm a front-end developer slash lead developer. Um, I've been working with NativeScript since uh, one and a half years. Um, some personal stuff, I'm married with two children. You could see them on my desktop earlier. Uh, I studied and speak Russian. Uh, and last year, after only two years of membership, I won second place in the 12 meter carabine shooting competition. I'm actually pretty proud of that. <laughs> All right. Enough about me. Um, so the product uh, we build at Neoclass, uh, it's called Epicuro. It's a B2B e-commerce platform for fashion wholesale. Um, it's Basically, it sits between the end user, which is the sales representative for a big brand or the, the store owner, uh, and the brand ERP system. Uh, Neoclass is not an agency, but it's a business innovation partner. So we build our own product, uh, but we do it in co collaboration with the big brands. Um, the name Epicuro comes from this, um, these letters, which is uh, RPCRO, stands for uh, Recommend, Purchase, uh, check out, review, and order. We juggled them around, around a little and we got to Epicuro because that sounds cooler than Repicuro. Um, uh, Epicuro, um, so Epicuro, Epicurus. Epicurus is a Greek philosopher um, and he's a follower of uh, atomism. Uh, I'm not a philosopher at all. I have no idea what atomism is, but I found it an interesting fact. Um, at some point I googled um, this philosopher and I was kind of curious what this guy, um, uh, what, what his father's name would be and would, if that would be an interesting name for the company. And it turned out, um, oh, went too fast, it turned out the, the guy's name was Neoclis. Um, and after consulting uh, with the rest of the team, uh, eventually that became the name of our company. Uh, so we have four global customers at this moment who are Echo, Brooks, Puma, and Bestseller. Now, Bestseller may not sound very familiar, but they run all these brands. So, not the smallest players in the world. Uh, numbers, so four global customers, uh, three environments, that's test, uh, acceptance, uh, and production. Uh, two platforms, Android and iOS, uh, and only one code base. Um, at this moment, the application, so far this year, has done 70 million uh, uh, worth of orders. That's just mobile uh, over across the four global customers. So our path to mobile uh, started uh, actually, uh, well, the company started in uh, 2014 when we started the application in, uh, in AngularJS. Uh, then in 2015, 
uh, we got the new customer, Bestseller, and they wanted to do a mobile project with us. Uh, initially, I looked into Ionic. Um, within a day, I decided that that was not going to work at all for us. So in the end, we settled for native. Uh, we got a developer uh, who could build the app for us. Um, and that was, uh, that was how the native app started. Then in 2016, uh, we also built the Echo app using the same code base. Um, but in 2017, we got two more customers. Uh, they also wanted Android. Uh, the iOS code base was lacking a bit in quality compared to the web one. Uh, and we were looking to upgrade the web project to Angular 2 Plus. Uh, so we had an idea to maybe share some code between the two. Uh, so at that point, I built a native script POC. Um, in 2018, fast forward, good 12 months, I think, uh, we went live for all eight apps. And in 2019, now that whole infrastructure is set up, uh, we have space for more customers. So this, at this moment, is our build and release pipeline. Um, before I can, I'm going to tell you exactly what this is, uh, I want to tell you what problem we were trying to solve. Um, I guess you can all relate to the fact that it can sometimes take a little bit of time uh, to build uh, the iOS and Android apps for native script. Uh, I timed it, timed it. it was uh, around 12 minutes uh, just for one app. Um, and since we have four customers, that was 48 minutes to build the apps for a single environment. That was way too many, especially when the QA guy is, uh, is on your neck trying to get a new build out of you, and you need to get the thing there really fast. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna tell you about is how we reduced the, the actual build time, uh, which was actually the last thing I did in this whole process. Um, um, so instead of first building the iOS app and then the Android version, uh, we actually parallel, parallelize that by running multiple agents on a single virtual machine. Uh, so we built uh, the application in Azure DevOps. Um, that went from 12 minutes to around eight to nine minutes to do Android and iOS. Um, but what really sped it up was uh, the fact that we uh, stopped uh, building the app for each customer, but instead just building it once with global settings. Uh, and then pushing it out to a release, release stage uh, where we would unwrap the IPA and APK files, uh, inject the right values in there, the right certificates and uh, some styling, uh, pack that back up and send that out to App Center, which is the tool we use to distribute uh, to our testers and to Play Store and App Store. Um, that second step, uh, including parallelization, takes five minutes for all eight apps, which, meant, which means that now we have eight apps in 13 minutes from push to GitHub to App Center, which was a pretty good achievement for us. Um, we had some challenges when we tried to, uh, to implement this. Um, the first challenge was branding the app for um, each customer because they all wanted to look a little bit different. Um, we managed to keep it to a minimum, so they wanted a custom font each. Okay, we can do that. Different action color, I'll show you later what that means. Uh, different icons and splash screens, of course. And different features and configuration. Uh, the last one we solved by, we already solved before on the web, by uh, providing all that information from the API. So, uh, working with the APK was a bit of a struggle initially because we thought, okay, we can just unzip it and then do whatever we want. Uh, but it turns out not to be that easy with APK. Uh, even though with uh, IPA files for, for iOS, it is the way to work. Uh, so I found a tool called the APK tool, which does exactly what we needed. It decompiles everything in the, in the APK file so you can actually edit it. Um, compiling assets for the IPA file. So in, for the Android, as soon as you, after you run the APK tool, you can just uh, replace all the image files. But for, for iOS, you actually have to create a assets.car file. So that resulted in a really long command line um, uh, tool 
that does that for us. So first we unzip the, uh, the new icons and then we run that tool and it generates a new assets.car file. Universal links, they were already kind of a nightmare to implement in the first place, um, but to get that working across different builds, uh, that was a whole different level. Uh, I think I spent a couple days doing this. So when I finally got it to work, I cracked open a few beers. I can tell you that. Um, then there was the challenge of re-signing the IPA file. So you have to update the entitlements P list, get the new app ID in there, get, uh, get the new universal link uh, URLs in there, all that stuff, and then re-sign it. Uh, and you have to, when you, when you re-sign it, you have to include the entitlements P list file in there on the main executable. So it took me a while to get that right, but eventually we got it right. Uh, we pushed the app to, uh, to App Store, it, it went through. Uh, and that went live at some point. Uh, and then the next app came around, which we we're gonna distribute using a different uh, developer account. And that's when, it, when we found out that uh, there's more executables in the file and we had to re-sign those too. But initially they already had the, the Neoclass um, certificate on them. Um, but when we switched to a different developer account, uh, they, they also needed to be re-signed, but without the entitlement speedless file. Also something that took me a few days to figure out. A lot of beer afterwards. Um, getting iTunes Connect to accept the freaking thing. <laughs> if you do it through App Center, you push your IPA file to the, to the App Store. Um, if something goes wrong, there is absolutely zero feedback. So that was really useful. Um, so you had to do that using a, using a real MacBook. Um, push the app out and that actually gives you some feedback, but even then it's still not really easy to figure out what's wrong and how to fix it. So a lot of try, fail, cry and repeat steps. Um, so here's a little demo of our app um, together with our uh, designer Marco. Initially we created uh, eight different videos which we tried to synchronize with each other and display on this slide. Uh, it turned out to be a, quite a circus. Um, so we settled for this. Um, so this is uh, the login screen, the first screen they see when after the splash screen is gone, of course. So there's some differences here already. There's different logos, there's different pictures in the background. Uh, that's all stuff that comes from the API. Um, but they also have a different uh, action color. So uh, Echo has some kind of green bluish color um, and Puma has a red color. Uh, Brooks has the blue color and Best Seller has uh, a greenish color. I don't know. Does anyone know the color name for that? Gray. 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 Is that gray? <laughs> uh, there's a little more color in that. Um, after you log in, you get to a uh, merchandise page, which is uh, really f focused, targeted at the, the, the person who logged in, uh, the shop that logged in. Uh, here again, you see some differences. So, for example, um, uh, Puma has a, a toggle between pre-order and reorder that the others don't have, but they insisted on it. Uh, Jack and Jones in iOS has uh, a burger menu on top, which allows you to switch between brands. Um, and for, uh, for Android, uh, it's more similar actually in this case. Um, but there's also a big difference between Android and iOS. Um, because as I told you before, iOS, they already went live with a native uh, version before on bestseller and that had a bottom bar and they insisted we keep it that way even though we had already developed something with a side drawer. Uh, the side drawer we kept on Android, on Android uh, but for um, iOS we went for the bottom bar. Um, here's a picture of the, uh, the side drawer that we have in Android um, and because not everything that's in the side drawer fit into the uh, the bottom bar, uh, the last icon on the bottom bar actually takes you to a page with more information. Um, then there's a search page. Again, there's one glaring difference here. That's uh, Puma, they wanted a dark theme instead of a light one. So there's that too. Um, then after someone clicks on a product in search, uh, they go to this page. Uh, again, here's a lot of differences. Uh, most of these di differences are driven by the API, by the kind of data that comes back from it. Uh, and then finally, there's the basket page. There's also 
some features different here, a few more buttons here, a few fewer there. Um, and then there's a scanning page. So um, as Eddie mentioned before, the NativeScript barcode scanner plugin uh, does not allow inlining it in Android. So we have to be creative there. Um, <laughs> so this is the, uh, I see Eddie laughing already. Um, so on iOS, we have it in line. You can just scan, 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 go really fast. On Android, you have to tap the button on the right bottom corner every time you want to scan something, and then what's uh, all the way on the right pops up. Uh, I promised Eddie to, uh, to mention uh, the NativeScript Firebase plugin, which uh, also allows for barcode scanning, and it, you can use it to, uh, to put it in line in Android. Um, so that's actually one of the things we want to do uh, in the near future. And that's back to the, the login screen. So one thing I forgot at the, uh, the beginning of the, uh, this uh, talk is, uh, one fun fact is that I don't talk often, but when I talk I always like to take a selfie with the audience to remind myself later what the hell I got myself into. <laughs> so I'm going to do that right now. Um, I guess you've been waiting for the right moment to smile and wave all day now. This is it. Thank you. That's it.